Oh my gosh, there's eight of you here. This is so fabulous. Let me just look at your comments. How are you doing? How are you doing, you guys? I just finished teaching. Brian's World is here. Russ Corbett is here. And Neo 100 Guitar Gods. Fabulous. Chris Lanthrop. Oops, Chris, where are you? Chris Lathrop. Kevin Renawick. Renawicky. I'm so sorry, I probably said that wrong. I'm so happy you're here, you guys. This will be fun. Um, we are going to, and Tiffany's here. Hello, Tiffany. I'm gonna play you something really pretty on the harp. It's about a tree. And Sylvia's here, fabulous. The group is here, our little gang is here. It's fabulous, I'm like, so happy. <laughs> it's wonderful. We're going to, I'm gonna play you something on the harp. We're gonna have a little, Shem board. Do you guys remember from last year's kind of Christmassy time? Um, we're gonna have a little sham board. And Kevin, are you from are you in Sri Lanka? That is so neat. That's awesome. So this is a I think it's a black currant liqueur. It's a fabulous liqueur, and I thought it would go well with a little um snack, some yogurt, some blueberries. I'm really hungry, <laughs> I need to eat something. I was gonna make some hot chocolate, but I was running a little bit late. So um, let me play you something. Yesterday I tried to upload, um, I tried to upload the Jurassic Park theme, and I don't know why I had a problem with that. It wouldn't let me load it. So I will have to make another video, you know, of, of just playing that. Maybe I can remember how it goes. Let's see. It was better yesterday. I practiced it a couple times, but um, I wanted to play you this song about a tree. It's called Kill Cash, and uh, it sounds like this. I'm going to read it, read you the little bit. It's from the Cantigas Festival of Favor. It's my favorite little, little um, medieval Renaissance folk music book. It's just the best. Renaissance Festival Favorites, you guys. Let me just show it to you. You know this book. You know this book. It looks like this. Hey, you guys. I can see your comments out of the corner of my eye. Um, I'm so grateful you're here. We're going to have some fun. We're going to unwind. We're, I'm going to just play you a little bit on the harp really quick. And then we're going to do our thing that we normally do. So this is called, it's from Ireland, Kill Cash. The Lament for Kill Cash is one of Cantiga's most requested tunes. It is taken from an anonymous 18th century Irish lament about the fall of the house of Armagh, which was stripped of every tree for English cattle grazing. Without, even without lyrics, it says, this melody often brings tears to the eye. It's such a gorgeous song. So I'm working, I'm kind of working on it. And um, let me just remember how this goes.
it's actually in here. Let's see. It'll be really pretty. I also have some Christmas carols. Gotta play you some Christmas carols. We've started working on Christmas carols in the studio. And I have to show you my very favorite um, Christmas carol book. This will be coming up an awful lot. It's in my, I think in the description, hopefully I haven't, thank you Chris, I try. <laughs> hopefully in the description there's a link to my um, Amazon store. It's at the bottom. Um, I've tried to make it like an auto thing that it just automatically puts that description on for me. So in the, at the bottom, there's a link to my Amazon store. You can find Cantigas, you can find the Fiddler, the Fiddling Christmas. It's such an awesome book, you guys. I love it because it gives you a little bit of history. Hey, Shri Rog, there you are. I was wondering where you were. So isn't that, it's just, it's really nice. Like it gives you a little blurb and it also has like um, a harmony part so you can you know, do a duet. It's fabulous. It gives you the chords as well. And it's in treble clef. So any instrument that reads treble clef can, can play this. It's wonderful. It looks like this. A Fiddling Christmas by Mel Bay. They need to hire me. I think they need to hire me <laughs> to promote their music, to promote all of their books and things. Okay, it's time for a drink. I think we need some of the good stuff. This is a black currant liqueur, ra black raspberry liqueur from Froth, apparently. So it's very strong and hopefully I don't, okay, there we go. Spill it all over my white pants. Cause you know, when you wear white pants, you get stuff all over them. Okay, I've got a fabulous crystal glass. Only the best for you guys. So that's probably good. Let's start with that. We'll start with that. And yes, so isn't this wonderful? I've tried to, I've kind of tried to like make it Christmassy in here. I'm thinking that I might put a little Christmas tree up in the corner. And um, cause you know, before quarantine happened and I was teaching at my studio, I decorated everything for Christmas and I would decorate everything for um, Halloween and like Valentine's Day and all that kind of stuff. So, and for the holidays, I used to bring like, I teach a lot of adult students. So obviously, and the, for my little ones that I did teach, their parents could enjoy this. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's funny, Dick. Yeah, if I just filled it on my white pants, it'll, they'll be multicolored, yeah. Um, and it purple is such a pur it's such a lovely color purple you know so anyway cheers cheers my dears this is definitely a sipping liqueur it's so magical it's magical magical i wish that you could taste some here have some <laughs> have some darlings this is just the best I'm not really a big fan of super sweet things, but every once in a while, it's just wonderful. Cheers, Chris. And cheers, everybody. So I've kind of like, like I have a little Christmas wreath on my music stand. And I've got some Christmassy things, as you can see over here. Cheers, Sylvia. <laughs> and this, this I'm gonna put on my scroll. I'm gonna have to put this on my my viola or violin scroll. I think for lessons in in December, I'm gonna just like wear tinsel. I mean, I'm gonna wear clothes, <laughs> obviously, but I'm gonna like put like tinsel around and and just be fabulous. I have a little like elf hat, a little Santa Claus hat, all those kinds of things. Just have fun, you know. Just have fun. So. 
What else is new? I did get the violin res the um, violin stuff from the Royal Conservatory of Music. I have not all of them, but a lot of the violin stuff. My, my, my brain's like so tired by the end of the night. <laughs> I have to show you just a couple things. So there's, it starts with a preparatory level, which I love. Neo says, I kept my Christmas tree up since last year. Did you really? You kept it up an entire year? That's awesome. This is the first book. It's the precursor to level one. It's wonderful. I love, love, love it. And um, I got everything up to level four. And then I have an etude book from them. And the they have a violin technique book as well, which is interesting. These are just all scales and things. We'll have to go more in depth on Friday. Maybe we can take a look on Friday. I have a shifting book. I got a fiddle book. Lots of things from the Royal Conservatory of Music. I'm just really excited to add that to the mix. I've decided I'm gonna just, you know, for those students that are interested in it, like maybe like the last, cause I like what we do, but I think that it would be fun to kind of like the last lesson of the month, do like a little quiz kind of where you, if you have time to practice, you know, I could give you a little test on your scale for a particular level, on an A2 for a particular level, and like a, a song from a particular level, and we just kind of cross that off. And that way we can kind of, let's see, um, Stardust, it's nice to see you do love Chambord too. Fabulous, it's a great, and that's a great idea to give it as a gift. That's like, you know what, gift ideas, Chambord, the Galamian School of Violin Principles. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, that, I'm thinking of another one. The Galamian Principles of Violin Playing and Teaching that we're gonna get into in a minute. Um, tea, Harney and Sons, you know we love tea. Harney and Sons has all these holiday gifts. Seize candy. Sending a box of chocolates would be fabulous. Um, what else? Hair products, remember? <laughs> I think the, one of the last videos we talked about, I was rambling about my new favorite hair products, the Virtue hair products. My hair is three days old here. And it looks really nice, doesn't it? It's from Virtue, Virtues, Virtue Labs. Everything's 25% off right now for Black Friday. Their, sh their products are amazing. They've really, really helped my hair. You guys are here for Ivan Glamian, right? <laughs> we have to babble for a few minutes before, I guess. I hope you don't mind. I know. Yeah, so what I mean is, like I have, I usually wash my hair on the fourth day, so this is like three days old hair. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, um, definitely check out Harney and Sons. All of you, everyone here, check out Harney and Sons tea. They have gift sets and wonderful things, and like holiday teas and everything. And. It's just, what a fa fabulous gift. They're not that expensive, and they're really, really fine tea. So, stamp of approval on that. Seize candy. Um, coffee table books are also interesting. So you get, like, a really lovely coffee table book of um, either fashion or, um, you know, art, a particular time period in art, maybe, or, you know, like, violin Stuff. I have like a beautiful book of violins, four centuries of violin making. I have to show you guys that book one day. It's got beautiful, it's a huge like encyclopedia of all the pictures of the violins and instruments um, throughout time. Let's just finish this together because if I don't finish it now, I'm probably not going to finish it and then I'll have wasted this delicious drink. There we go. So before we start, let's read a quote from the blessed Terence McKenna. This has been on the music stand for ages. You are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and light, and you will return to those realms. I know I've read that on a lot of our, our little live streams. Let's see. This is an interesting one. 
I don't believe consciousness is generated in the brain any more than television programs are made inside my TV. The box is too small. <laughs> so I just love his quotes. They just inspire me. One other thing I need to do is I have to pick out my new, you know, cards for, for my music stand. I like to ch kind of like have different tarot cards on my music stand, like whether they're oracle decks or tarot cards or just whatever. I just find them very interesting visually. And I, I love symbols. I'm a big lover of symbols. So I love having, that's why my music stand is literally just a, it's like a collage of different fabulous things. You just have a little bit of yogurt. And, um, you know, on Friday, we have our studio circle gathering. So those of you in the studio and those of you on Patreon, you can, you, we can all have a little family time together. And those of you on YouTube that aren't on Patreon, go check out Patreon. It's just patreon.com slash violin viola masterclass. And I have lots of videos there for you. Every week you get a little um, lesson video on scales at the moment. There's another tier where we have a virtual studio get together once a month to practice playing, make some musical friends. I'm really excited. I'm going to play a few things and I want to play something on the harp for everybody. So I'm just grateful, grateful to have our wonderful community. Guitar gods, yes, tarot is great. It is awesome. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out my method of payment as far as Patreon goes, Chris. Okay, well, um, I think actually it's pretty straightforward. They, you can either use a credit card or maybe PayPal. I'm not sure. And it's nice because you can, you can also cancel any time too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can cancel any time. Um, and anyway, let me grab... The Ivan Galamian Principles of Violin Playing. It's time for us to get into this, I think. So, we are on page. We're in the right hand. So we're looking at right hand technique. Let's take a look at some pictures here. Pictures are always wonderful. There we go. I wonder how many of you guys have this book. This is really a wonderful book. Wonderful, wonderful book. There's, there's actually, there's at least, I have to take you through my library. One of these days we will look, we will look through there together and you can see all of my favorite books on uh, music and pedagogy and all that kind of thing. Um, okay, let me find where we were. I'm going to start here. Motions of the hand in the wrist joint. So we're talking about the bow, right? By the way, though, if anyone's really struggling with the bow hand, like if you really just need help with it, there's there are some really amazing bow grips out there. Um, I have them. I actually have them on my store, but let me see if I can find them really quickly. There's like a frog and a fish, <laughs> and you just put them around the bow, and they're so comfortable. They are so, so comfortable. Okay, here we go. They look like, if this loads, they look like this. So there's like a little thing for your pinky, that's for the pinky, that's the fish, and then there's the frog, and it's just so, so comfortable. They're called bow hold buddies bow hold buddies I'd recommend getting them in black because they blend in a little bit better that way but they're awesome all right the motions under this heading are those that are the most commonly called wrist motions this terminology at best lacks precision since the motions in question are actually movements of the hand from the wrist and not as the terminology suggests of the wrist. 
However, having made this observation, we shall not be overly pedantic about it. So he's saying that when you, like the wrist, I guess the wrist movements are actually from the hand. So the hand goes down, the hand goes up, right? So um, even though we're talking about the wrist, I guess he's saying it's really the hand that's moving you. Vertical movement of the hand. The hand can swing up and down in relation to the forearm. Up and down are to be understood as motions which originate from a level position of the forearm and hand, held horizontally, palm downward, wrist flat, as shown by the middle hand. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so let me grab my bow. So you see how the wrist is kind of straightish there, you know. I always have a little, I mean, if there, I, this, this is one of the ways that I like to think about it. And then we can read how we really should think about it, but your, um, your hand, your arm looks like this if it's relaxed, right? If you don't normally like do this, you have to maintain that. So um, you've got a wrist so that it will bend. So even when it's here, it's gonna bend. Maybe when you go out more, it's gonna be straight, so this is kind of more more out, especially if I'm out at the tip here. You can see that then the wrist is gonna to start to bend. Right? Okay, let me pop this down. Throw his bow down. <laughs> okay. The up motion of the hand forms a so-called low wrist, a bending in or pushing down of the wrist. So let's see what he's talking about here. So that's when you're at the tip, right? When you're at the tip, your wrist is bending this way. So that's the down. This reverses itself when the hand drops downward, forming the high wrist, which is like this. Okay, horizontal movements of the hand. Again, let us suppose that the hand is held horizontally in a straight line with the forearm palm downward. A certain amount of lateral motion is possible for the hand in the direction of the thumb left and toward the fourth finger right. This movement has a much smaller range than up and down motion, but it is nevertheless highly important in many types of bowing. The move, I'm not really sure if I understand that. The, move, the horizontal movement of the hand. Let us suppose the hand is held horizontally in a straight line with the forearm and palm downward. A certain amount of lateral motion is possible for the hand in the direction of the thumb left and the fourth finger to the right. This movement has a much smaller range than the up and down motion like this. Okay. But it is nevertheless highly important in many types of bowing. Okay, these two motions can be combined so as to allow the hand to move in any direction and to describe completely circular motions around the axis that runs lengthwise of the forearm. Okay, let's break, let's pause. Um, is my heater bothering you guys? If it is, let me know and I will turn it off immediately. What are your problems? Do you have problems with the bow at all? Because I know that it can be kind of an awkward thing to hold. I know that I really struggled with it for a long time. So, one of the things I like to think about you don't have any, oh, the heater's not bothering you. Thank you, Chris, thank you. Because I get cold. <laughs> Keeping the bow straight. Okay, interesting, Dick, yeah. Oh, gee. Keeping the bow straight. That's actually, let's see. Let me grab my instrument really quick. This is what I notice with my students and myself. 
So you're fine when you start, right? When you do a down bow, you're totally fine. But then when you do an up bow, your wrist doesn't bend and it does this. But if you let your wrist bend, like when you started, so if you come back to exactly the way you started, it'll be fine. It's just that when you do a down bow, your wrist sometimes get locked, gets locked there, and then it's straight, and then it just stays straight. And then you move from the shoulder, and that's not right, but you need to let the wrist bend there. You see? So, that's one of the things I notice, and there's a great exercise. I think Galamian talks about this one. He might be he might be getting to it. I don't know, or maybe he's he's already talked about it. I can't remember, but it's basically like triangle. You see how this is a kind of like a triangle here. I can't play because it's a bit too late here, um, but triangle, and then get to where it becomes a square. You see now how it's a my arm is looking more like a square here, and then you're gonna move from the elbow extend so it's straight elbow square and then you've got your triangle and once you go from your square to your triangle that's when your wrist has to bend so just some just some food for thought just some little things okay let's move on back to the longian let me move a little bit closer, you guys. I'm still sitting on that ball chair. It is quite loud. Neo, there is a shadow you can watch as your bow, as you bow to tell if you are bowing straight. Interesting, thank you. And Justin says, thoughts on Suzuki bow hold where the thumb is under the place where it should be. Okay, yeah, Um, I actually learned that way when I was really little, and I don't know that it was really a good idea, but I what, what works for me, you know, might not work for everybody. So if Suzuki teachers teach, I, let me just show it so everybody knows what we're talking about. So sometimes when you first start, you're told to hold your bow here under the frog, right? Like this. And that's actually how I learned, and I, I just don't know that I really like that idea because you get used to it. So it's much, I think it's better to just learn how you should hold it initially because we get this muscle memory that's used to that. And this really isn't the right way to hold the bow anyway. Right? Sorry for my chair. <laughs> my chair makes some like rudest noises. So it just doesn't really encourage the best way to hold the bow. And you see how the wrist is straight here. So that's, you have to maintain that. But really it should be like this. So that's why it's so much better to just like, I just get those little um, bow grips. Remember I showed you the bow grips? They're on my store. If you um, click on my link, they're, um, they look like this. You can find them on Amazon. They're called um, Bow Hold Buddies. And there's a little frog and a little fish for your bow. They're expensive but they're really comfortable. They're really, really comfortable. So I, I kind of, you know, rather do that, I think. I always teach, I always teach my students from just like, what's, what's kind of like the regular bow hold basically, <laughs> so that they don't have to unlearn something. That's what I, I tend to do. But having said that, I don't teach a lot of really little ones. I have some little ones that I teach, but I don't teach a lot of really little ones. So it might be easier with little baby ones to really give them the bow like that. So yeah, Justin, no worries. Shall we have some more shambord? Let's have some more shambord. I have to turn this heater off. It's making, it's drying me out. I'm turning into a raisin. I've been sitting in this room since like one o'clock. <laughs> so quite a long time. It's very dry in here. I need to get a little humidifier. Okay. This is not the right glass. This is the right glass. There we go. I'm going to put it right here and open up the glass. You know, I bet you could put this in some champagne. So it would be like a black raspberry champagne. You know, that would be fabulous. 
We have to do a, um, I have some little like Christmas decorations from years past where we've done fun things as a studio. Like I, I took us all to the Christmas market here in Philadelphia one year and I have this little ornament with everybody's name on it. It's my favorite ornament ever. And I have some other little ornaments that I've been given. Um, I, I know that I have um, like a little gold violin that was given to me by one of my students. And I think I have something else. Oh yes, I have another like little ornament, little porcelain violin ornament with like a little heart in it. I have all these cute little, we have to like decorate the music stand. We'll have a little video where we decorate the music stand. Maybe we can do that on Friday or maybe we can do that on sometime in December. We'll do that. Do you guys have any like Christmas carol requests at all? If you do, let me know. Mm. Are you guys doing anything tomorrow? Or are you just kind of keeping it chill? I've been um I've been listening to um do you guys know who Tim Dillon is? He is so hilarious. He's the greatest comedian ever. He's so funny. And um, I was listening to him talk about how he's going to eat Taco Bell for, he like wanted to have a Thanksgiving get together, but given the state of the world, now he's just going to like, just do the complete opposite and be alone and just eat Taco Bell. Spending time with mom and grandpa. Wonderful, Chris. That's nice. That's nice. Mm. Well, whatever you do. Have a fabulous day. Have a fabulous day. You're going to grill some steaks, says Neo. Fabulous. On your George Foreman grill. Very nice. Mm. Well, let's continue onwards. Let's just read a little bit more of this. All right. Motions of the arm. Oh, this is this is literally what I was just talking about. Remember the triangle um, of vegan young two friends. Very nice, Dick. Fabulous. Yes, I will continue. So motions of the arm. Open close motion. The forearm can bend and straighten. Hinge fashion in the elbow elbow joint with the effect of closing and opening the arm. This is probably the most important of all the bowing movements. And it is used in almost every type of bowing stroke. So you can just open and close your arm, right? Even if you just have it at your side, that's what your arm's doing. Notice how your wrist is curved unless you make a fist, right? You have to maintain that. That's not supernatural. This is a little bit more natural, right? All right. Forearm rotation. The forearm can rotate in the elbow joint around its own lengthwise axis so that it can turn the hand without any assistance from the upper arm. From a position with the palm facing the floor to one almost directly facing the ceiling, this is the movement used so much in daily life for turning doorknobs <laughs> or keys and locks. Very important in bowing technique, it is a motion that is often mistaken for a hand movement. The technical term for these turning motions are number one, palm turning downward, pronation. Number two, palm turning upward, sepination. So let me show you what he's talking about with that one. Please don't fall. Let's see, I'm gonna put this on the ground here. There we go. Grab the instrument. Okay, so watch my my hand, right? I think that's what he's talking about. Let's see. Um, where is it? The forearm can rotate in the elbow joint around its own lengthwise axis so that it can turn the hand without any assistance. So the elbow. I think he's talking about this. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what he's talking about. Yeah, useless. Help, not helpful. Sorry, not being helpful. But you know, when you, let's say like when you have to change like strings really rapidly, it helps if you, like let's say I'm going from the G string to the E string, you have to like, you know, move from your shoulder there, but you can also like prepare the arm motion by letting your elbow lead you. 
and see what I mean? So the elbow's kind of leading everything rather than just all in one like this. This is kind of clunky, but this is a little bit more fluid. So same thing when you go reverse, your elbow can kind of guide you the other way, elbow guides you. So maybe he's talking about that. Let's do, let's read one more little section and we'll wrap, wrap this up for tonight. Okay. Oh, you know what? That was motions of the forearm. So why don't we leave this new section? This is motions of the upper arm for next time. I'll make a little note that we will save this for next time. I'm going to play you some things on the harp just so that we can say bye. Um, and we'll take a look at this next time. I'm going to try that kill... Kilkesh song again. I just it's stuck in my head. It's so beautiful. So so beautiful. You guys, thank you so much for joining tonight and I hope that you sleep well. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday and I love our get togethers. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm a little crazy by the end of the night. I've been teaching since like two o'clock today. So it's now like what time is it now? Like ten o'clock or something. So, long day, long, fabulous day. This goes out to you. I'm just going to be noodling around here. So, um, if you need some comfort, if you are falling asleep, if you just, you know, need a little comfort, here's some music for you from me to you. Lots of love, you guys. This is Kilkesh about trees, about the beautiful trees. lovely you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining tonight, and I will see you very soon. I'm hoping to see you on Friday. We've got our studio circle on Friday, if you want to join that. And um, I was really wondering if there's something else I was going to tell you. We talked about the um, Royal Conservatory of Music stuff. Thank you, Dick. I try. I definitely do try. Um, I gotta work on that one. I have to make it, like, just fabulous and take it up an octave and have some fun with it. Thank you, Guitar Gods, and thank you, Chris. Um, so we'll, we'll have lots we'll some things to babble about on Friday, and um, I hope to see you guys at the Studio Circle. If you, if you can make it, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, just check it out on Patreon, and um, see you on Instagram, see you on Instagram, and all of those kinds of things. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is falling asleep now. I'm sending you a big hug. It takes me a thousand years to say goodbye. I have a hard time saying goodbye. And I'll see you all very soon. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Lots of love. Sweet dreams.